I think that all of us live in a world that we don't fully understand. Every single one of us. Whether you think you do or you think you don't, you don't understand the world we live in. It's not a knock. It's not a uh, accusatory statement. It's just fact. Right now, America is burning. Not all of it. Not all of it. There are some beautiful moments happening. There are people consoling each other. There are people um, showing great acts of empathy. Should those moments be exemplified? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Very important. Should the opposite be exemplified too? I think hell yeah as well. Because we need to know the flip side of the coin. It's important to see the dark side as well as the light. That's why I, re I really like the yin and yang uh, mindset. The yin and yang um, concept of the world. Because there is darkness in the light and there is light in the darkness. It's really a beautiful concept. But today, light is being shown on the darkness. The darkness inside a lot of us is being revealed. It's an ignorance, you know, a unappreciation for what some of us go through and an attack. America is rioting right now. I don't know when I'm going to publish this video, but I have been planning to talk about this for a while, and it seems like this is a real interesting dichotomy or a opportunity to talk about it. I've been up since two in the morning. I went to bed fairly late. I went to bed watching two men pilot an aircraft, space an aircraft turned spacecraft. I guess that's what a rocket is, right? It's an aircraft in the air, and it's a spacecraft in space. Ingenuity. Human ingenuity. My daughter, Eva, couldn't take her eyes off of it. I was really proud of her. She was watching the capsule, and she heard the people say, Dragon. Did they say dragon, Dad? Yeah, yeah, that's the capsule. Is a drag capsule? Yeah, that's, that's what they call the tip of the rocket that carries the people and the supplies. Oh, what's that thing on the front? I said, that's the nose cone that lifts up so that it can attach to the space station. Space station? Is that like a train station? Well, in a lot of ways, yeah. But instead of trains coming and going, you have spacecraft coming and going. And she laughed. That's silly, Dad. It's like a train station. That's silly. And she was fixated. She watched, because if you saw the dragon capsule, it very, very slowly connected to the uh, space station. My daughter's four years old, just going on four. Not four yet, three and almost four. A few more months. And she was just, Mommy, it's a dragon. There are people in there. They're going to the space station. It's like a train station. Look, Mommy, look. She was enthralled by it. I was really proud of her. I was worried because when she's young, her focus is not as, you know, all of us, you know, our focus is easily diverted. But she was... She was intent on watching this moment in human history happen. Two men piloting a spacecraft 
designed by a whole bunch of really smart people in a company headed up by an American guy who is an immigrant from another country. It's speaking to a lot of people. It's a beautiful moment. And my daughter was taking it all in. It was great. She's going to carry this moment with her little four-year-old brain forward with added knowledge, added experience. She's going to understand that people have the ability to go to space. People have the ability to design something that goes above our heads in such a distance that due to the lack of friction in air can be thrown forward so fast that the force of gravity reacts against them in such a way that does not fling them back to earth or fling them out to space but keeps them there controlled balanced floating okay she doesn't understand all of that in fact my my wife annie doesn't understand she's like how the hell does that work I don't blame her. It took me a while to understand the fact that if you have zero friction and your momentum can stay steady, that if you move yourself forward enough, you can fall and move forward at a rate that keeps you up almost to infinity. <laughs> it's really crazy and amazing. And my daughter was just biting into that apple of understanding. Just biting into that that thought that can go so many places. What are humans capable of? Where could we go? What can we do? The sky is the limit. And when the uh, SpaceX and NASA crew announced that they were above 250 miles above the northern uh, areas of China and Mongolia. Daddy, it's China. I says, okay, it's China, but where is it? Is it, is it down there? No. I says, is it, is it up there? Yeah, yeah. She said enthusiastically. It wasn't like, yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah. I says, it's way up there, honey. Really, really high. She's like, it's dark up there. I says, yeah, it's dark here too. It was, it was night, you know. She was just so impressed, and I was so proud that she was impressed. And she's, like I said, going to carry that moment and that thought with her. Hopefully she'll expand on it. It'll feed her um, curiosity, and it'll grow into... A bright young lady who understands that the world is full of possibilities. And the Americans took you there. And you know what? That's pretty damn cool. And you know what they did? They docked at an international space station that was built by the smartest people all over the world. All over the world. A house floating in space, powered by the sun, unmitigated creativity and science and forward thinking. The only way that she could see this, this happen, was through a streaming service from her phone. She was witnessing it from an apartment in China and that gained her appreciation. Now, would that appreciation grow if she was standing in the SpaceX, NASA uh, ground control office? Yes. There's a, there, I'm sure there's an energy in that place. I can tell every time they cheer when one of those rockets lands back on the um, I Will Always Love You uh, landing pad that's floating in the ocean. Wow! Wow! So, so, so there is a benefit to tangibility and being there. But by extension, viewing it online 
is a important substitute because she wouldn't be able to go to the ground control anyways. Most people can't. But 1.5 million people were watching at the time streaming, you know. And so she was able to, to have a taste of it, you know. What am I getting at? I'm going to give you the solution to world peace. That's pretty pompous to say. <laughs> but later, I went to bed. And I don't know why I woke up. But I woke up at about 2 in the morning. I've been up since. It's 6 o'clock. But I've been up since. And I have... Uh, I'm going to turn this screen away so I don't stare at the camera. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And... Uh, started seeing craziness. People angry, people fighting. Police officers ripping off people's masks and spraying pepper spray in there. You ever been sprayed with pepper spray? I was in a club once. Somebody sprayed pepper spray. That's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. If you, if you can't think about it, think about inhaling sandpaper. Sort of like that. And then take that sandpaper and just give your eyes a little buff. It's not pleasant. It goes away, thank God. I saw a reporter's eye get blown out by a rubber bullet. She's blind in one eye now, forever, according to the report. And so I went scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling. And like it or not, the way the world works, if it bleeds, it leads. And so there was a lot of bleeding, and those were the tweets and, and posts that were leading. You dug a little deeper, you saw some people empathizing, some people subduing protests. No, no, subduing rioting by engaging in the protests, encouraging the protests with empathy, saying, I know what you're walking for. It is not right. I'm going to walk with you. I'm relating to certain police officers and certain police forces that instead of working against the protesters, were joining with the protesters in their anguish, in their frustration. If you're watching this in the far-flung future when we're all peaceful because they've watched this video and everything is great, <laughs> then uh, let me give you some context. Um, a gentleman was killed a few days ago. A police officer kneeled on his neck until he died. And that made people angry. It made people angry not because it's horrible, because it is, but because it happens a lot at least in my home country of America. Before that, a guy was jogging down a street, minding his own business, stopped into a house under construction, looked around. Nefarious? Nah. Could be? Maybe, if you really, really want to twist and contort, contort yourself. Even the guy who owned the house said it wasn't a big deal. A couple of guys down the street didn't think so. They got in a pickup truck, chased him down with shotguns, Confronted him. Killed him. Guy was black. Guys in the pickup truck were white. Context. There's a lot of people in the world that can't appreciate what it's like to be a black person in America. I certainly can't. I grew up in suburban uh, southeast Michigan. I don't claim to be able to appreciate or understand everything a person of color goes through in America. But my dad gave me an, a beautiful ability. I've talked about it in my videos before. It's probably the most important thing he's ever told me beyond life is what you make of it. He told me, Matt, you got to put on the other person's shoes, no matter what they say, no matter what they 
disagree with you about, no matter what they uh, feel, put on their shoes and look at the world from their point of view. Try. I do that with the, my detractors. I do that with my comment section all the time. I've recently had a lot of hate directed at me in the comment section, and it is very, very angry. I live in China. I'm an American. I don't like how America has done this virus thing because I've had the view of the whole world, and I can see that America has done it quite different than a lot of other countries that have stemmed the tide of death and destruction and loss of employment, loss of financing. It fucking pisses me off. So I've been called all manner of things. A shill for China. A bastard, a this, a that. I, I don't know what's going on. You need to, you need to keep your mouth shut. Um, I very rarely accuse. I, I, I accuse Trump. That's for sure. But I try not to accuse other people too much. I certainly don't do it with a raised voice. Try not to. But it always seems like the loudest voices are telling me to be quiet. That's interesting, right? The loudest screams with the craziest comments in their posts and their social media platforms are the ones telling me I need to shut my mouth. You don't know the real story. I don't. I never uh, told anybody that I am the ultimate arbiter of truth. Even though earlier I just said that I have the solution to world peace, but that was sarcasm. But let's just say, you know, I've lived in China for 10 years, traveled all over the world, lived in America for 30 of those years, traveled all over America along that time. I have a pretty good base of uh, knowledge to speak my mind, so I'm speaking it. <laughs> but it is interesting that the loudest voices are screaming at me to be quiet. You shouldn't open your damn mouth. You should be a mouse. Well, I can be a lion. <laughs> Craziness. My mouse mouth, mouse mouth, is telling people to take a deep breath, please try not to resort to violence, and try to have some empathy. The loudest voices are saying, you are different from me, and you are different from me, and you don't believe what I believe, so you know what? You're fucking wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I just find that amusing in a very tragic sort of way. Anyways, so I'm watching the news, watching social media, and watching the country I love. I do love it. I love my family. I love most people I've met in America. They're amazing people. But there is a sy systemic problem in the world, in a lot of places. For those of you who think I'm just, just attacking America, I'm not just attacking America. I'm I'm American, though, so that's what I have to relate to. That's my biggest base of knowledge, that and Asia. So my stuff is very American-Asia-centric. When I end up being able to cycle around the world, maybe I'll get to Europe and spend more time in Europe, more than I already have, and I'll be able to give you some more um, nuanced opinions, <laughs> as long as I don't get shut down. By then, before that. So America is burning. So I reached out to some of my friends in the States to try to see how they were doing. Ask them, what's going on? How are you? One of my friends is black. And I asked her, how is she doing? Is everybody okay? She says she's scared. Her daughter, she's afraid to go outside with her daughter. She doesn't know what her daughter's going to be exposed to. I told her that although I think she should keep her daughter safe, I think it's an important moment for her daughter to see. 
just like it's important to try on those shoes, like my dad said, I think it's important that we wear the shoes that are currently protesting and understand what they're going through. And uh, as a black mother and her black daughter, I think that she, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying she didn't. I'm just saying, you know, I says, you know, this is important. It's important for all those white families and all my, uh, my, my, my friends who, you know, who've had li- very comfortable lives, but also very isolated lives to wear the shoes of, of black Americans who feel repressed, who feel fearful, who don't feel the things that we feel because we don't have to in a lot of ways as a white American. I don't have certain things I need to worry about that other people do here in China even. Blacks are underappreciated in China. It's just a fact. Not everybody, but it sure is. Um, it is. It does happen. It happens everywhere. But you know what can clear all of this is, is this whole idea of appreciating other people and who they are, where they came from, what they're doing, what they've done. What are their motivations? What do they want? What are they striving for? What motivates them? You know what you'd find? They're all trying to get the same shit. They're all, they're all good-hearted people. I went to North Korea. North Korea. DPRK, Pyongyang. I talked to some North Korean people who knew English, and I shared smiles with those I couldn't. I tried to impart on them a smile of happiness, of appreciation and understanding that we're all humans in this. And they grinned back at me. Some people might say those grins were hiding behind snake eyes. I was running with a Russian. I went there for a marathon and I was running with this Russian. I said, wow, a lot of these people on the side of the road are smiling. And they're genuinely smiling. And she looked at me, no, Matt, they're not smiling. They think you are the devil. <laughs> I am from Russia. And when I grew up, I was taught to look at the Americans, but understand if they looked at you with a smile, they had jagged teeth. <laughs> Maybe that's true. But that did not stop me from giving them a big smile and trying to connect with them in some way. Because I knew North Korea isn't going to be the way it is forever. And eventually that kid that saw me smile at him might grow up and say, you know what? I was able to beat past the propaganda and see the smile from that American running down my road. And he didn't seem like that bad of a guy. And I told my friend that she should expose her daughter to as much of this as possible so that she can learn from it. It seems like today, a lot of us have it so easy. We have computers in our hands. We have the ability to view almost anything we want on TV, to learn whatever we want in books and on the internet. We have technology that provides us the opportunity to tell stories. And what do we do with all of these amazing things? We almost isolate ourselves even more. Our social media platforms become tailored through algorithms to give us exactly what we want to hear. Nothing less, but everything more, I guess. Just, it makes our bubble seem rock solid, like a titanium ball of hate, of bigotry, or of love, or of travel, or of flowers, or of socks, whatever your mojo is, there is a bubble for you to live in. And once you get into that bubble, you are stuck. Because confirmation bias is a bitch. And you will find that nothing out there does not confirm what you started to believe when you went there in the first place. If you think blacks are the problem, you're going to go to a bubble and see a whole bunch of shit that's going to tell you that blacks are the problem. If you go in and find out that 
libtards are the cause of all your problems and you are going to find a whole bunch of libtard bullshit. If you go in and think the right wing is the end-all, be-all of evil, you're going to find that too. Everybody inside their bubble feels like they are fighting a war against everybody else outside that bubble. Holy shit, that is dangerous. A lot of people are going to tell me I'm inside that bubble. They're going to say you're in the bubble of China. You're in the bubble of uh, liberal progressives that are destroying the world. Am I a progressive? Yes. Do I believe in liberal policies? If you think education for all, health care for all, aggressive environmental policies that help uh, this earth we live on uh, breathe a little easier, um, then, then yes, I am for those things. Equality for those things. Understanding and empathy for those things. Then yes, I am that guy. And if you're in that other bubble, you think that that is why I am part of the problem or inexpensive. Why do I believe in free or inexpensive health care provided to you by your government, your society? Why do I have such a strong view on that? Is it because I'm in a bubble? No. It's because I talk to people that have it. I've been to countries that practice it, and I've seen the results. I've read many, many articles from many, many sources of people that are comparing the two between systems of like it is in America and outside. And you know what happens? It's changed my perception. And people outside are living much more carefree because they don't have to worry about paying bills for something that happens to them that might be out of their control, might be completely accidental, but all the same will destroy their life. I don't think that's right, especially in a society that's supposed to be so ahead of the world. Why do I feel like free education or inexpensive, very, very cheap provided education is, is a good thing? Because I've talked to people who get to learn for a fraction of the price that Americans have to pay to learn. Why do I think that the military-industrial complex is bloated and the money should be devoted to other places? Because I've been in countries that, are, that have been through it. I've been to countries that don't concern themselves so much with the military and it provides them an opportunity to invest in social programs that help society grow. It also removes the desire for war. When you've got the biggest hammer in town, you've got to find a nail to hit. And if we didn't have that huge hammer that we're pouring all this energy into, we might think a little harder before hammering away at every nail in town. Why do I think? I mean, we have a private prison system in America. People make money based on how many people they have locked up. It's a profit motive. Other countries don't have that profit motive. Do I live in a bubble? I do. We all do. Just some people's bubble is their iPhone or their social media campaign or their city, but maybe even less than that, their community. What's my bubble? Everything under the ozone layer until I can get aboard that dragon capsule and dock with the space station. Everything underneath that space station is my bubble. Every person under it, every country within it, every system that plays out where I'm at. I've been to many countries, I've been to many places and seen many people and had many conversations. And those have sculpted my thoughts. 
Am I right? Oh my god, no. I am not right all the time. But my perception is based on a pretty exotic life experience. I've met poor people, impoverished to an extent that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can compare uh, a, a Laotian um, uh, vagrant or even, hell, even a Laotian farmer is making less than, than a hobo in New York City in many cases. <laughs> can I empathize with the uh, homeless person in, um, in New York? I can try. I can try to put his shoes on, just like I tried to put the shoes on of that Laotian farmer who's slaving away for very little. Is that Laotian guy happy? Oh, in many ways, I, I think so. I can't speak for him perfectly, but I sure can look at his face and sit down with him and have a bowl of soup or in Vietnam have some pho in some weird village or in Cambodia um, eat some um, eat some barbecue on some weird uh, <laughs> little stall on the side of the road. What I'm getting at here is the importance of travel. The importance of getting out there firsthand, seeing the world with your own two eyes, speaking with people with your own mouth, not depending on your phone to deliver information and feed your narrative. Not completely. Th this is very important. I'm not saying that this doesn't have importance. As a matter of fact, it's helped people broaden their horizons on a lot of issues. It helped me to see what's going on in America. It helps us. But you got to also have a foundation that's based on stuff outside of that. And if you're trapped in that bubble, the only way that you're going to confirm if that bubble is in fact true is if you can get from outside that bubble and talk to real people around the world. Talk to the people that are in their own bubbles and find out what's going on in those bubbles and those bubbles and those bubbles and then put all those bubbles together and try to realize that the world is more than just that bubble. And there's a lot of other ways to do things right. I, I don't think China's perfect. Hell no. There's things I disagree with wholeheartedly. I will tell you that I have no doubt that what they did once they realized the severity of this COVID-19 virus is admirable. People really get on China and say that there is some, uh, they're hiding numbers here. But I live in a city of 8 million people. We haven't had a single case in quite some time. Months. Yesterday I went to a party Everybody was relaxed and happy. In that same village during the outbreak, there was a few cases, and they locked the village down. Like locked. Contact tracing like crazy. Quarantining like crazy. Uh, testing like crazy. Um, uh, masks like crazy. Social responsibility like crazy. People were getting frustrated, but they were listening You look on the news, you'll see all sorts of crazy news about what happened here in China. But I was here on the ground. I didn't see all of China. But I sure as hell can share my experience. I can share experiences all around the world. As imperfect as China is, I've also realized that America's not perfect. I'm not trying to say... I'm anti-American. Shit. Our Constitution is based on the ability to raise your voice against um, perceived uh, injustice. It's part of our damn Constitution, so of course I'm going to say it. I don't care if I live in China. I don't care if I live in Zimbabwe. If I, have, if I see something happening in America and my knowledge of the world that I've gained through a decade or more of traveling around and meeting people and seeing people and pulling in experiences has any value to, to add to that, to try to temper or teach or add to the conversation, I'm going to fucking add it. You're not going to stop me. People are angry. 
some of these loudest voices that want me to be quiet, they haven't had the experiences I've had, and I haven't had the experiences they had. I've had a lot of people tell me that I need to shut up, get on my trike, and ride. All I want to do is, I just, you are apolitical, Matt. All I want to do is see people ride around the world. Well, you know what part of riding around the world is? Is developing a perception of belief based on that travel. So if you really want to fucking learn about people that travel around the world like I do, you better listen to the ideas that I've gained through traveling around the world like I do. If you want me to shut up because all you want to do is see me travel, go to another channel. Because I've learned things. I've seen things, and I think that holds value. My overriding principle is empathy and peace and understanding. And if you want to leave because you don't like me trying to make sure that people are understanding and empathetic, then fuck you. I'm sorry. You might think of me as a hypocrite for that, but I'm sorry. I'm pissed off. I, I always appreciated America for what it stood for. I love America for what it can be. How do I impart on people my thoughts and beliefs? Well, a lot of them I can't. The only way, the only way that a lot of people can gain an understanding if they want to. And that's the other thing. A lot of people don't want to. They're very content in their bubbles. But if they want to travel, go into the world. Don't listen to what you deem as fake news. Don't listen to what you deem as true news. See it and do it for yourself. Don't let anybody else tell it to you, like me. Don't listen to me. Go out there and do it. Meet a Muslim woman in Indonesia. Meet a poor Indian family in Mumbai. Meet a foreigner that has lived outside of your home country for decades. That's another thing. Because I'm not the only one. You know, I may be thought of as a liberal cuck or a snowflake or a um, progressive piece of shit by a lot of people. But you know where the majority of those people are? In America. Because, sorry, most of the world, most of the modern world, most of the intellectual world, most of the world that has uh, a base of knowledge that has been built on travel and things like that, all my expat friends, most of my expat friends, not all of them, you know what they believe in? A lot of the stuff I do. Have I met some fairly staunch right-wingers on the road? Hell yeah. You know who you are. You hate watch me. One of you I've unfortunately blocked because you, you just attack me over and over and over, and I'm just fucking sick of it. And so you're in the band, band group. Not very many, but geez, some of you get under my skin and I just got to be like, I can't, I can't sleep at night. Do you realize that when I read my comment section, I take all of those comments very close to the heart. You deride me or you congratulate me. Either way, I lay in bed at night, staring at the ceiling, judging myself. Was that criticism warranted? Do I need to change the way I think? Do I need to adjust the way that I think? Am I on the right path or am I on the wrong path? Am I being stupid? Am I being ignorant? Am I ignoring the plight of Chinese people? Am I doing China justice? Am I doing America justice? Am I doing wrong? Am I hurting and not helping? I do that constantly. Maybe that's why my memory is such shit, because it's constantly debating with itself to, to make sure that I'm on even keel. If I say something in this, 
that is wrong, and I get called out oftentimes, I, I add that to my lexicon of facts and things I got wrong. But my initial statements are always told from the heart. I don't do this YouTube channel to be a, a YouTube celebrity. I do this because I want to share experiences, because I know they were so important to me, and I'm hoping they become important to you if maybe you can't travel like I have. Because a lot of people can't. And so my opportunity to do what I do, I want to pass that opportunity on to others because I think it'll lead to world peace. That's about as altruistic as you can get, I guess. But I do believe that wholeheartedly. World peace is on the other side of compassion and understanding gained through personal experiences. You might find the cover is pulled off of somebody that you once trusted and you find out is not trustworthy. You might find out that somebody that you didn't like or didn't understand is actually a really, really, really good person. You might find out that the country painted with a black brush is in fact blue. The only way that you can do that is by personal experience. Personal experience is not all what you look up in your phone. So I just wanted to leave that. This is a very, very important video. I hope the audio came out okay. And that red light is still in the corner. I keep looking over. I hope that red light is still there and it didn't stop recording. This might be my most important video ever made because it's, it's really my guiding principle in life. My path is very interesting. I grew up overly greedy, thinking that wealth was the key to my happiness until I started traveling. And then it all changed my worldview. And it can change your worldview too unless it's already been changed. And I think a lot of you guys understand exactly what I'm talking about, but not all of you. Understand that we're all in a bubble. It's up to you to desire and quest for more information to get out of that bubble or understand your bubble a little bit more. Are we all right in all things? No. But the only way that we're going to grow as a society is with understanding, empathy, and appreciation for your fellow fucking man. That's it. The only way. So as long as you stay isolationist, closing your borders, closing all of these things, this is why I consider myself sort of a globalist. It's the only way, is if we all share in this world, if we all understand each other, I don't mind fairness. Of course, there's lacks of fairness. But uh, don't hit it with a hammer. Massage it. Loosen up those tight muscles and you'll understand each other a little bit better in a way that doesn't lead to war or conflict. See things coming and get ahead of them. I'll finish with a story. My dad, who passed away a few years ago, he used to deride me for a horrible trait. Anytime I would go in his workshop, my dad was a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician, a mechanic, and basically anything else you needed done, he could get it done. His shop reflected that. He had pockets and cubbies and shelves and drawers full of every manner of tool to get a job done. I would take a tool, do something, and leave it on the table and then walk away, do something else. I was very scatterbrained, still are. Try, try to fix it, but it's part of, my, part of me. <laughs> and he would always come up to me and say, Matt, you have to put that back to where you found it. You have to understand that this whole system works if you understand where everything goes and what everything does. You've got to appreciate that screwdriver by putting it in its rightful place and understanding that we are all part of a beautiful, cohesive picture.
And you can get anything done in this shop as long as you respect its component parts. If you make sure to respect everything in this workshop, put it where it belongs, give it the respect it deserves, understand what it does and why it's there, understand why the saws go where the saws go, why the screwdrivers go where the screwdrivers go, you understand how the world works, you can get any job done in half the time. I want to get the job of world peace done. And it's taken too damn long. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you appreciate this talk, I can probably do more. Maybe not as eloquently as this one. I really think I, I should get up this early more often. I have a, uh, a live uh, Jio travel show, first one coming out. It'll be out, obviously, um, in the past when you watch this. But uh, hope everybody does... Does I hope everybody is okay, and I hope that uh, we can all get through this together. We obviously can. I hope that this has um, just helped you add a little perspective. I'm not right, but I think I'm on the right path. I want you all to be too. Don't be coaxed by fear and anger and hatred. Jayo. And uh, I'll catch you later. Share this video with whomever. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't. But if you call me an asshole too many times, I'm going to ban you. <laughs> I don't need that sort of energy in my life. You got constructive criticism. I'll be listening. Bye, guys. Take it easy.